it's time to go to Costco again. But this time we're going because I have a personal errand to run. But we're gonna check out the nut section. Okay, now Costco has an abundance of nuts. They've got the baking section and then they have just their traditional nuts that they sell not for baking, right? But I wanna teach you a little bit about specific nuts and which ones are good for what. But you're also gonna learn a little bit about the fats that are in the specific nuts. So you might be thinking, what the heck? Are we gonna just talk about just different kinds of nuts and seeds? Like, what is there to know? The cool thing is there's a nut for every ailment and there's a nut for every like body composition goal. So we'll have some fun with this, we'll break it down, but we'll also throw a little bit of personal stuff in the mix because I gotta get a rocking chair for my wifey because we have got a baby girl due in just a couple months and we gotta get the nursery set up. I'll go ahead and link down below if you want to check out Juve, but the fact of the matter is if you're looking at red light therapy, it's pretty much Juve anyway. You're not going to find any other ones that are out there that are even worth looking at. So I did put a link down below. Let's roll. We're going to have a giant stash of nuts at the house now. <laughs> the first order of business before anything else, the honeydew list. I cannot get out of here without getting the one thing that I was asked to get. I can do a breakdown on fabrics. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just Hey, this, this fabric is good. Yeah, that's the one that Amber wants for the nursery. There we go. What would I do without Cameraman JR here? I'm gonna get called out for not helping you out. <laughs> you probably will. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing is when you're shopping for nuts, there's a few things you need to consider. Okay, are they roasted? And if they're roasted, what are they roasted in? Okay, then the other things you have to look at is the omega-3 profile, which is very, very important. You also have to look at what kind of skin the almond is in, or the nut is in, excuse me. Because like in the case of almonds, the skin has a lot of phytic acid, which actually impedes digestion and impedes nutrient absorption. So there's a few things that you'll learn. So as long as I can find the nut section, we'll be good to go. Ah, here we are. Okay, so pistachios, one of the higher carb nuts that you're gonna find. So not only is the best ketogenic nut, but still a really nutrient rich nut. Okay, the thing I like about pistachios is the fiber content is great. Okay, so when you're in a world of nuts, they don't digest all that well to begin with, but when you have specific kinds of fibers, you are going to get a little bit of help here. Now, here's the nice thing about the Kirkland Signature brand. Super, super simple. Dry roasted pistachios and salt. Okay, nothing to it. Then, I haven't taken a look at these, let's see. These are the organic ones. California roasted. Okay, so this is cool. So both of these are dry roasted. Both of them are using, uh, one's using regular salt, one's using sea salt. We've got 849 per pound versus 583 per pound. Now the question is, pistachios, do you wanna go organic with pistachios or do you not wanna go organic with pistachios? The thing is, when they're grown on the tree, they are in a shell, okay? Some shells of specific nuts, like almonds for instance, they spray the base of the trees and what happens is when they shake the nuts down, when they shake the almonds down, they fall. They're still protected, but you end up with a lot of the pesticides and a lot of those things. Pistachios, they rattle them off the tree a little bit different, so it's not quite as important to get organic. Um, so I wouldn't be too concerned about it. So when we're looking at the price point here, it definitely makes more sense to go for the pistachios that are this one. So 583 per pound, that's a market difference. So if it was just a, a dollar, I would say go organic. But they're not roasted in any oil, they're dry roasted, which is always what you want to look for. Again, not the best keto nut, so you want to do it in moderation, but good to go. Okay. Well, this makes it easy. We've got macadamia nuts right here. These are my favorite nut on keto when it comes down to taste profile, when it comes down to the different things that you can uh, get in a nut. Okay, they're one of the only natural sources of omega-7 fatty acids. Okay, omega-7s are very, very unique. Here's the thing about omega-7s. They make omega-3s more available in the body. So what that means, omega-3s are already hard to come by. They're already, uh, and on top of that, they're very difficult for the body to utilize them properly. Okay, omega-7s are unique. They activate particular gene transcription pathways and everything like that that allows the omega-3s within a nut to be utilized better. Now, the best thing about macadamia nuts is they are a very low omega-6 profile. Low omega-6 profile means they do not have the fatty acid in it that triggers type 1 and 3 prostaglandins, the kinds of uh, things that trigger inflammation within the body. That may sound really silly and kind of dumb, but it's actually really important because if you're doing keto or you're just eating low carb or you're just shopping for nuts in general, the last thing you want is an abundance of omega-6s. We get enough of it from the canola oils we consume, we get enough of it from all kinds of things. So we want these. Now, 
These are just roasted. They're not roasted in any oil. Super simple. And what is this, Kirkland? See, before when I was at Costco, they didn't even have Kirkland brand. They only had uh, the orange one. I don't even remember what it's called. I don't see it anywhere. So there's not as high of an omega-3 profile in macadamia nuts, but it's all good because we're so low in omega-6, we help the balance out. Believe it or not, it doesn't seem like it, but macadamia nuts are expensive, so this is actually a good price. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab these. My wife loves these even more than I do. And fun fact, my son Tommy, who's two, uh, we say, hey, do you want a mac nut? He calls them knock knocks. So he goes around asking, can I have a knock knock? Okay, almonds, this is nice and convenient right here. These are raw almonds. I would advise, quite honestly, probably staying away from raw almonds. Now I know there's gonna be others out there that say, hey, you get a better nutrient profile, you don't oxidize the fats through the roasting. The heating process will always damage oils. The hard part is, what good are the oils if you're not really utilizing them? A raw almond is very high in phytic acid, okay? So phytic acid makes it so you cannot really uh, get the full digestion, okay? Oops. Let me move out of the way here really quick. Okay, had to shuffle a little bit because we were filming right by the sample area. And if you've been to Costco, <laughs> you know that part gets busy. So let's scoot down a little bit more even. So with, with almonds, so when they're raw, what happens is the phytic acid. Now phytic acid is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's what's called an anti-nutrient. And it's designed to help uh, protect the plant, right? So if a squirrel were to eat this nut, well, hopefully it would chew it, but if a squirrel were to eat this nut, it would probably pass it through, right? Or if you ever look at animal droppings and you see that a lot of times they still have chunks of the nuts and seeds in it, that's because they don't, A, mechanically digest well, because obviously they're hard to break down, but they also end up uh, making it so that they don't break down because of the phytic acid. Now, that means that it's going to chelate to minerals, it's gonna to chelate to precious vitamins that are in your body. So we have to be kind of careful there. So I'm gonna pass on the raw almonds, even though that's a really good price. Uh, if you're gonna roast them yourself, that's great. But one thing that I would recommend doing is if you get the raw almonds is sprout them. Soak them in water, save some money. So you buy these, you soak them in water for 24 hours and that sprouts them and that breaks down the phytic acid and makes it so the nutrients come out. Now let me show you a perfect example uh, because now we get into the pumpkin seeds, right? Pumpkin seeds are already sprouted. So this is just a great idea and it just works out perfect. They've taken seeds which are really hard to digest and really hard to break down and they've gone ahead and they've sprouted them already. Now when we look at pumpkin seeds, they're very high in zinc. Okay, I'm a big fan of zinc and copper, super good for the thyroid, super good for your overall metabolism. Plus because they have copper in them as well, they balance out zinc. Zinc and copper work together. Okay, so they have to be balanced. If you have too much zinc, it envelops the copper. If you have too much copper, it envelops the zinc. And zinc is very important in immune system function, it's very important in cells that regenerate fast. So you'll notice that you have a zinc deficiency if, for example, your hair starts getting brittle or your nails start getting weak, things like that, they start getting brittle, simply because your body is going to pull from the areas that aren't as important first before it starts jeopardizing your immune system. But it's also just a tasty treat, and I love these around the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have these. And that's also a really good price, by the way. Like normally, even if you get regular pumpkin seeds, you're gonna pay mm, a lot more than that. And these are California prices, by the way, so these are already inflated. Let's see what else we got here. Ah, let's jump over to walnuts. Okay, walnuts have a very high fat content. So in this case, I would recommend going for a little bit more of an organic source whenever you can. And let's see, we've got 416 per pound, Okay, so it is quite a bit more expensive to go organic with these walnuts, but I do know for a fact that walnuts are a good one to get organic simply because they are heavily, heavily sprayed. Let me move my card out of the way. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, so, so they are heavily sprayed, which means we just want to use a little bit of extra caution. Now, the neat thing about walnuts, they are one of the highest omega-3 nuts. In fact, some will argue that they are the highest omega-3, depending on who you really talk to and what nut you're looking at. But research that I've done shows that they are at least in the top two. So does that mean that we can get our good solid sources of omega-3s from these? Kind of. Here's the thing. Any land source of omega-3 is not going to get utilized all that well in the body. So you might be wondering, is this whole video null and void? No, it's still very, 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 very valid. Okay, the omega-3s, even though they are not from a fish source that could be readily used by the body, they are still good. And a little hot tip that you can do, 
is if you mix these up with a little bit of turmeric, one of the things that I've done is put a little bit of coconut oil spray on them. Okay, then you go ahead and add a little bit of turmeric, just a dash of turmeric, and a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt and mix it up. It actually makes a really tasty, savory treat. But the curcumin activates specific gene pathways, so different gene transcription that allows us to utilize the omega-3s from a land source better. So that means any kind of nuts, that means any kind of, uh, I don't want to say grains, but some grains, things like that. So we want to be able to pay attention to that. So it's a really cool thing. So just a quick little hack. The other thing you have to be concerned with with walnuts normally be the omega-6 content. There is a high level of omega-6s. So, okay then it ends up being a little bit of a wash because omega-3s and omega-6s compete with each other. Now, that's again where we get back to why the macadamia nuts are superior. Okay, the macadamia nuts have that omega-7 that's gonna help the omega-3s be more available, but it also has the low level of omega-6. So the point in saying this is, although omega-3s are really important, what's even more important is how low the omega-6s are. Walnuts have a higher level of omega-6s, but they still make my list because they are such a good overall just nutrient profile. So here we have different choices. I don't think we have any roasted walnuts. So, well, you know what? Here's a good example. I've got pecans. And one that's often compared is going to be walnuts and pecans. What do I want to go with? Well, if I was to pick one of these over the other, in this case, knowing the research that I know today, I'd go with the pecans simply because they're easier to digest. Now let's look at the label for a second. Uh, same carbohydrate, con or excuse me, same, yeah, total carbohydrate content, okay? But the dietary fiber is slightly higher in the pecans, which makes it a little bit better for a low carb diet. So that, that builds well with me. But additionally, higher fat content, okay? Two, 22 grams of fat, okay? Same saturated fat content. So we're looking at a very, very similar food here. I also know for a fact that pecans have relatively low phytic acid content, okay? So they break down fairly easily in the body. So if we're looking at, you know, apples to apples or nuts to nuts here, I'm gonna go for the pecans over the walnuts. Again, whoops. That is not saying that walnuts are bad, and I know I've picked them up in other grocery hauls, so don't just, you know, rip me a new one simply because I go back and forth. It all depends on what I'm seeing in the research. Pecans. Ooh, gosh, man, it's just a paradise of nuts here. Let me talk about this for one second. I love what they're doing here, but this is not going to work for you. Okay, so we've got an omega-3 mix here, but it's a blend of cranberries, walnuts, pepitas, almonds, pecans, and pistachios. So they got all the nuts that are fairly high omega-3, except they have all these nuts in here that are high omega-6 that cancel it out. But the other thing is sugar is going to be oxidizing all this. So we've got sweetened cranberries, that's going to basically cause an advanced glycation end product result within the body combining with these proteins and these fats. Point in saying that is, Yes, it's an omega-3 rich nut mix, but you're not getting the benefit out of it, especially when it's denatured by the sugar. So let's not bother with that. Um, ah, okay, let's go. Dry roasted almonds. Yes. All right. So you guys know that I'm not the biggest fan of the almonds uh, when it comes down to them being raw. And usually when you look at roasted almonds, they're roasted in canola oil. Now, I've done videos countless times where I go and I look at most of the almonds that are on the shelf at most grocery stores, and what are they cooked in, or what are they roasted in? Canola oil and or safflower oil. So basically what that means is they're roasting them in a very low quality oil. So you're taking a fat in a nut that is already halfway decent. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great, and you're making it terrible because you're roasting it in oil. So dry roasted is great. Now, in this case, it also breaks down some of the phytic acids. You can see how some of the, uh, the skin kind of flakes off. You want that, okay? Now, if you could ever get blanched almonds where they don't have the skin, that's even better because the skin contains a lot of those anti-nutrients. So this is, a, actually, that's a really good deal. Because normally, if you get like the Blue Diamond brand or you go anything like that at, at Walmart or Target, you're gonna pay like three, four ninety nine dollars for like a six ounce container. And here I'm getting two and a half pounds. This is enough to blow anyone's diet with a lot of calories. Uh, I know that my wife used to like to put these in, let's see. These dry roasted. Okay, so these are sliced almonds, which is great, uh, but I believe they're raw. It doesn't say they're roasted. Big question with almonds. Almonds are something that you do want to try to get organic. I do not see them organic here. I'm not too worried about it because the impact of organic versus non-organic on nuts is relatively negligible, but still. Uh, let's go ahead and grab them just for the sake of this. Ooh, and now we're going pistachios. Oh, we've got more to look for. Ooh, pine nuts. Yum. 
Ouch. Okay, here's a perfect example. Now, salt and pepper pistachios are delicious, but here's the thing. Pistachios, salt, pepper, sugar. No, no wonder they taste good. Onion powder, cool with that. Garlic powder, cool probiotic fibers, good with that. Dextrose? Why is that? I understand they're doing it probably as an anti-caking or just a, I don't know, yeast extract, which is just another word for monosodium glutamate, essentially. It's a flavor enhancer. Uh, lemon juice concentrate, cool with that. All right, so this is frustrating because basically what this means is that we have a perfectly good nut that has been just decimated with things that denature a lot of these fats, but also you're, it's basically preservatives. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's basically flavor enhancers, which worries me. Now, at least the plus side is you have a barrier to entry with a pistachio where you have to pick the shell, right? So you're not going to overconsume these more than likely. But as a comparison, let's take a look here. Pistachios. So if you want, I would recommend getting them with the shell simply because it's way too easy to overeat pistachios. And look at the carbohydrate content. So again, giving you a comparison here, eight grams of carbs, compare that to our pecans again. Okay, half the carbohydrate content. So we've got, I mean, pecans are obviously gonna win, but the point in showing that is that if you get these without the shell, it is so easy to just consume a bunch of them. Now, they have the nutrient profile that we like, that's great, but again, we'll stick with the ones that I got. Now this is one that I'm happy to see here. Okay, pine nuts, but we do have to be careful because it's still a decently high level of carbohydrates in there. Cool thing about pine nuts is that tanginess, that kind of bitterness that you get from the, uh, the pine nut, comes from specific phytosterols. Now these phytosterols are really good at increasing levels of specific kinds of HDL cholesterol. So remember we have different forms of HDL, sorry, I'm trying to get out of people's way here. Uh, different forms of HDL. We have large particle, we have smaller particle, we have fluffy particles, and we don't investigate a lot of the HDL particles because we're too busy focusing on the demonized LDL. My point in saying that is, the monounsaturated fats combined with the fat sterols can help decrease lipopolysaccharides and help improve your gut flora, which in turn has an effect on your HDL levels. Now, a lot of this is convoluted, kind of misdirected science, things that I've seen from different studies. The point is, is that this is a very heart healthy nut. And the nice thing about it is you don't need a lot of it to get a good amount of fat. Okay, so we've got three tablespoons is going to get you 200 calories, which makes it good, but also bad. The thing I don't like about it is when I'm just trying to get fats and calories in, that is not a price per pound I want to do it at. When I can compare that to the same similar price per pound of macadamia nuts that I think are a better fatty acid profile. So great if you're making pesto, things like that. Uh, instead of using um, canola oil, use an olive oil base, use some of this. It's a good little mix, but I'm going to pass on those for now. Ordinarily, I would skip right over peanuts, but for the sake of this video, let me instruct a little bit what's going on here. Peanuts are a legume. Okay, they are a highly inflammatory legume, and that means that they fall into a whole different subset, whole different category of food products altogether. Although they're called a peanut, they're not even a nut. Okay, the fatty acid profile is less than great, okay? And also, the inflammatory response that you get digestively and within the body, I would strongly advise against peanuts. However, a small amount is going to be fine. So I'm not going to bother with it. Um, if you do get them, get them in the shell, but generally you're not going to find good quality peanuts. It's just hard. Oh, check this out. Okay. So we've got Marcona almonds. Blanche Marcona almonds. Ah, here's a perfect example. Okay. So I found Marcona almonds. Marcona almonds. Okay. So these are a lower phytic acid content, which usually makes them a very good quality almond. Check this out. Blanched Marcona almonds. They've been blanched. So the skin's gone. But then what do they, why do they do that? Why must, this is what I don't understand. You take a perfectly good oil, perfectly good fat, and you just ruin it with another oil that's really gonna cause a big problem. Peanut oil, the reason they use peanut oil is it has a high smoke point and you can cook at high temperature. So they probably cooked these at very high temperature and they were concerned with what to use. If I were them, I probably would have used like avocado oil or something like that. You probably can't dry roast these and get the taste that they're after. So I understand, but it's such a bummer for this little bit more money they could have used like an oil that would actually work. Um, ah, we do need to talk cashews for a second. I like that these are organic. Okay. Well, these are unsalted, unroasted. Now, cashews are the highest carbohydrate nut. Okay. So let's see, where are we? Yeah. Eight grams of carbs. So they, they're in line with the other ones, but here's the thing. Dietary fiber, less than one gram. So all those are straight up carbs. And okay, now if you eat almonds, now if you eat cashews after having some of these other kind of nuts, you notice that they have a sweet taste. 
Cashews are technically a fruit, so they don't even fall in the nut category once again. They're very, 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 very high phytic acid content, even higher than almonds. So what that means is that, again, you're getting that demineralization, you're getting that chelation effect where you're not utilizing the nutrients, the vitamins that you would normally getting from your other nuts and other foods. So they are actually really a travesty in the world of nuts because they taste so good, but it's just something you don't wanna be having in the mix because quite frankly, they just, they hurt you more than they help you, more so than just the waistline side. They can be very inflammatory. And these aren't even roasted, so we just really are getting those phytic acids in there. So, and then we got honey cashews. Okay, guys, come on. Need I say more? Eight grams of sugar. We, yeah, that's just kind of a joke. Let's see what else we got here. Pretty good nut selection here. Okay, same kind of thing. Honey roasted nut mix. Not gonna even worry about that. Antioxidant mix. Pistachios, almonds, dark chocolate. <laughs> Let me guess, the dark chocolate sweetened. Cranberries, first cranberries, sugar, sunflower oil, almonds, golden raisins, which are raisins, oil, sunflower, or, or canola, palm vegetable, sulfur dioxide, dark chocolate, sugar, chocolate. You know what the most inflammatory thing that's out there is? Is sugar, right? I don't understand. Sugar causes glycation, which is the furthest that you can get along in an oxidatively stressed world, right? If you're going to trigger oxidative damage in the body, sugar is the way to do it. I personally feel, and no disrespect to this company, but I feel like it is a, an outlandish claim to call this an antioxidant mix. Like, how come we can call that an antioxidant mix when the actual net result of this is more inflammation and more oxidation in your body? Be very, very wary. Do not trust things that say, do not trust things that say antioxidant. You need to do your own research. You need to do your own homework and be your own advocate. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. Go down the other snack aisle, but I think we've nailed most of the nuts. Those are just little single serve packs, which aren't gonna be good to go in this case. Right, what's we got here? All right, this is the candy aisle. I don't think we're gonna find anything here. Looks like there's some more nuts on the end display here. Probably don't need to tell you anything about chocolate covered almonds, chocolate covered nuts. Okay, cool, we do have some more choices here. Ah, sweet. Okay, we'll wrap it up over here. All right, same kind of deal. Oh, this is a plus. I mean, I'm not gonna get them, but at least here we have them roasted. <laughs> Never mind. I would almost I would go for the raw ones over these. If you're gonna go cashews, go for the raw ones. Roast them yourself. It's not hard to roast them. Dry roast them. Or roast them with a little bit of good oil. Take some avocado oil. Use that stuff. Roast your own nuts. That way you can put some turmeric on them. You can give that zest. You can um, you know you can get even some like nutritional yeast and roast them with a little nutritional yeast and get it like a cheesy taste. Just roast them yourself. You don't need to lean on other people to do it in cruddy ingredients. I have a feeling it's gonna be the same way. Cashews, pistachios, almonds, and pecans. Not the best profile here, like, it's, but it is extra fancy. Um, yep, once again, there we go. Peanut oil, it's a bummer. Okay, that's not gonna fly. What about these? Well, what's the deal here? We got, oh, one's unsalted. Okay, so, um, looks like this is, yeah, it's still peanut oil. Oh, this has Brazil nuts in it. They don't even have regular Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts are one of my favorite uh, nut, by the way. Very high in selenium, which we know. Oops. Selenium is super good for the thyroid, so it's required for the conversion of T4 to what is called T3, triiodothyronine. So basically what happens is we have T3, or we have T4, excuse me, T4 in our body, which is the inactive form of thyroid. It needs selenium to convert over to triiodothyronine, but it also needs iodine. Now iodine we're gonna get from salt, we're gonna get iodine from seaweed, we're gonna get iodine from a lot of different marine animals, things like that. Uh, selenium is hard to come by in a lot of foods and all it takes is like two Brazil nuts to get you there. So it's super easy. And then zinc, some of the things I've talked about in these other nuts, zinc is very, very good at utilizing the thyroid hormone at the cellular level. So if you're looking to boost your metabolism a little bit, you wanna pay attention to zinc, you wanna pay attention to selenium. And of course you wanna pay attention to that omega-6, omega-3 profile. Now I know that these are here because I picked some up the other day. This is sprouted mixed seeds. Okay, so in this case, Sprouted pumpkin seeds, which we already got here. Sprouted sunflower seeds. Sprouted watermelon seeds, which I actually need to do a specific video on because watermelon seeds have a whole plethora of other benefits. They are a little bitter. They are a little interesting, but they actually work with the flavor profile of this just well. And that's what I like about this brand. Just four ingredients. Um, when it comes down to weighing out which ones to get, I get this one over the pumpkin seeds. I just forgot they had this one here. So I'm gonna put this guy back and get this one instead and we'll be in good shape. Go ahead and check out and get this honey-do list all done and see if we find anything else along the way. Put these guys back first. 
actually. Amber likes pistachios. I'm not going to get all of these. I will definitely get her macadamias. I'll get more of these. Okay. Guys, I don't need more pecans, and I don't want to waste food, and I don't really eat almonds. So I'm going to get these three because these are the ones I'm actually going to take home because Amber's not on keto right now because she's pregnant. So she kind of goes in and out of keto to try to get different nutrient profiles. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so get the pistachios for her. I love these and everybody loves macadamia nuts. We can hit the receipt. $479 worth of nuts. No. Trying something a little different though. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be eating these nuts this week. I'm. I'm experimenting doing a quick surge of a lower fat ketogenic diet, which is really just strongly protein with no real added fats, which actually is not something you want to do for a sustained amount of time at all. It would not be good. Um, but I'm just testing some things out, testing how I feel because I've been seeing some interesting science. Excuse me. No, well, I'll return this to the office. No problem. Thank you so much. Thanks, man been seeing some interesting science surrounding um, your body efficiently using its own fat tissue versus fats coming in from the diet uh, and brain function. So I'm curious to see how my brain feels if I reduce my fat intake while following a ketogenic protocol um, during, oh, during periods of time in which I need more cognitive function. So I'm experimenting with it now and it'll be interesting. So I'll keep you all posted on that. but. Uh, I'm looking at these nuts being like, dang it, I can't even eat those. I'm going to be eating lean chicken and lean fish for a little while, but I'll keep you posted on everything. Now I get to try to load this into the back of a Tahoe, which is going to be interesting. So if the camera shuts off, it's because I've solicited the help of JR. All right, so that sums that one up. Now I want you to do me a favor. If there's specific things at Costco that you want to see me do videos on, put that in the comment section below. I wanna start breaking these up so I'm not just doing a haul, I'm doing different sections of the store to teach you physiologically what's happening inside your body. But for now, we talked about the nuts. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. See you soon.